my relationship with snooker now is is I mean if it was love hate before it's uh, it's now love hate hate um, right because I'm, I'm I've, I've got I've got a wild card to play in any tournaments I want um, and uh, and it's never been a comeback it's never been to come back and try and win things anymore it's you, always been to just get fact, a wild card playing some this playing, is not a, a yeah, comeback. playing yeah. some matches see what happens but the problem is I don't practice. <laughs> And okay. how can you expect to go and do anything if you don't prepare? Well, yeah, for it? I mean, even in the in the briefing call we had for this podcast, uh, you were just on holiday, and you said I've not really been playing. So no. playing golf, which is a different game. Yeah. to be absolutely I, I'm, fair, I, I'm, I'm I'm basically on the golf course eight days a week, so that kind of gets in the way of, of preparation. It, I mean, I do, I do, do. Yeah, it's again because it's a different set of skills. Yeah, I'm torn between. I've got. I mean, I lost in a qualifier recently, four 0 to Fergal. To Fergal O'Brien, yeah. And now I probably played to zero point zero two percent of maybe the way I, I could play. Yeah. Fergal, really... Fergal didn't play great. I mean, he's he's at the end of his career as well. He didn't play great. If I got to two percent, I'd have beat him. He's not so that, a young so guy. There, so, yeah. So yeah, there is like... a problem. I, I couldn't even get to two percent. Now that's that's just. I mean, you won't get off the table and you think, well, why am I doing this? But um, you know, snooker's my life. It always has been, and and. You know, I still think, you know, at one point, one of these matches, I will give someone a beating. <laughs> but it's getting less and less likely with these performances. But, you know, I, I, you know, I prepared like two or three days before. I'm, I'm stuck between do I practice a lot for these or do I just yeah. turn up and see what happens? Uh, and how much difference does it make, the practice? It obviously must make a huge it, when, difference. When it was my job, when, it, when, when I was in the 90s, it, it was practice was, was all important. You, know, oh. you had to prepare for the tournaments. And if you didn't, you get to the tournament, you feel guilty because you hadn't done it. And, how long would you be doing per day? I'd be doing five, six hours a day, yeah. five, six days a week. Um, whereas now, if I've got a match, as I say, I was so bad against Fergal O'Brien that I've not picked up my cue since, and I'm not going to pick up my cue until 10 minutes before I play. So that's the new system. Right. The next system might be having a glass of wine, <laughs> but that's a dangerous yeah. road to go down. It is, but I, I, <laughs> to relax. I, I'd, I'd love that's to watch you play. That's, that's the last resort. But um, I'd like but, to see you at Ponds uh, Forge, just completely. <laughs> well, I've never been to Ponds Forge. That's the thing in itself. You know, when I was talking earlier about um, looking at people's shoes and suits and everything, I mean, I used to play the Crucible, full Wembley Conference Centre, yeah. three thousand people, full Hong Kong, three thousand people, full. And now I'm playing in a leisure centre with a swimming pool next to it. I mean, how would you get yourself up for that? That's, well, that's, that's a problem. I think this is what I'm fascinated by and what most fans will be fascinated by. Because I can't think of many people who've been sort of multiple world champion mm. and, and, but are now prepared to still play Yeah, like at that level. Not just in snooker, but across the... Uh, like I suppose, even someone like Andy Murray, he, he, he's still playing, but yeah, he's, he's yeah, at yeah. a certain level. Do you... I mean, does it bother you to get beaten by people it, who... It, you, it does. You must, it must bother you, because you're it, saying, it, like, yeah. you know that you're better than it, that. It does, and, it, and, it, and it's something I'm kind of battling with. If, if this keeps going on the way it is, there's no point, um, you know, because, you know, if it, you know they, they say the, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Yeah. I'm not practising and going to matches. I'm expecting to all of a sudden play well. Um, you know, it's not happening. So yeah, there will be a time where I think, no, I can't. This, this is not yeah. enjoy. This is not from being like, oh, let's play a few tournaments. Let's see if we can enjoy going out to a tournament. Quali but um, and, and and for me, you know, the qualifiers are are, are are always in sort of venues that are not very inspiring for me. Must be, yeah. Look, it's, 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 they have to be there. There's a purpose for these these qualifiers, and they have to be in these venues. But as I say, when you've played the venues I have, you, you you're looking for a wee bit of inspiration, yeah, to get yourself up, and no, they're not really providing it, but that's not the whole story. That's maybe five percent, ninety-five percent is it a fact. I'm, I'm, I'm basically I played and got beat. Yeah, that's that's it. That that would be my, my press conference answer. But, but How did saying, it go? I played and got, got beat. beat. <laughs> <laughs> but you, like you're saying, you you've only got to get to maybe two percent to beat someone yeah. like Fergal. What um. In real terms, how much work would that take to, to um, get there? Do you reckon? Like, I'm not sure because in in, in there's a, a Jimmy White always said, you know, and and I see him in, in interviews after losing. He says, "Oh, in practice, I'm flying." Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm the same. I, I'll practice for two hours. I won't miss a ball on my own. Yeah. And so I think, oh, maybe this match is the one. Um, but then I get out there and I don't play with the same cue action that I do in practice. So they're 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 lions. The thing, if if I can't convert that to that, then yep. there's, there's no point. There's no point. 
We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Do you have people saying to you like, "Oh, I watched you growing up," or "You're my hero"? Or well, I seen I seen, I seen a comment on World on the World Snooker um, Instagram actually posted when they, they lost to um, a guy called Mohammed Asif. And, yeah. Um, I'm not kidding. I mean, he probably deserved to win, but he, the run of the ball he got was unbelievable. The luck he got was it was it was, it was he fluked two frame balls and another one that won him the frame. Um, but that sounds like sour grapes. Yeah, but it's also reassuring but it's up, but, uh, <laughs> for a fan like me to know yeah. that you're still angry. Yeah. yeah. But someone posted on World Snooker, why is Stephen doing this to himself? And yeah. I thought, and I thought, yeah, why am I doing it to myself? Well, yeah, it's interesting. But yeah. but yeah, as I say, it might not last forever. We'll see how it goes. You know, you're not exactly doing it to yourself, are you? Is is that you? You must still love playing on on some level. Well, as I say, snoo- snooker's all I've ever done. Yeah. And it's and it's well, it's not what I'm best at now. Um, I don't know what I'm best you're at. Better now. at golf. Well, yeah, but possibly, possibly. Um, but, but yeah, the skills don't really translate. You can't uh, break off in snooker and hit it like two hundred yards. I suppose. That's it's, true. It's, that's true. But um, but yeah, snooker. I worry that the more golf you play, the worse you'll be at snooker. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you've it's, got to hit really well, hard in yeah, golf. In, in practice, and on my own, like, I'm, I'm still, I'm still really good. I mean, my coach, I, I work with a guy called Stephen Feeney, site right. Mm. He's worked with all the top players, and he says like, you, you, you play as well as anybody. But um, what's the point in practice? There's no point. I mean, obviously, you weren't playing at all for a bit. Mm. What led you to c- um, come back in the first place? Uh, I actually played a game of golf. Me and Mark Williams played Steve Davis and Barry Hearn at golf in Essex. Um, about well, it was pre-COVID, so it must have been about four or five years ago. Um, and Mark was always on about to have a look with a Stephen Feeney because he worked with him when he won the World Championship. And um, and he's never stepped away from it, has he, Williams? He's... No, and he's and he's he's found his best form the last four or five years. Incredible. Um, but Barry said to me, he says, "Look, I'll give you a wild card. Do you want to play? I've watched your seniors things. You look played. Do you want do you want a wild card?" I says, "Yeah, yeah." I says, "But I'm not. I don't want to play in everything." He says, "No." He says, "As long as you play in one tournament a season." You can you can have it for as long yeah, as you right. want, but if you play nothing, I'll take it off you because there's no point. Um, and he and he and he said again recently in my YouTube chat, says as long as I've got a hole in my arse, I'll have a wild card. So that's on video. He can't go come away from that now. He's always he said it. On his ass. He said yeah. It. <laughs> that's not negotiable. Yeah. So um. So yeah. I mean, it's so as long as I've got that, then then. Why wouldn't you? I I'll play. But as yeah. I said. There's got to be a time where you think I can't, I can't put up with this not being able to make a thirty break because it's embarrassing. Because it's uh, the players that have beat me, they've been decent players. But as I say, I need to, I ten percent of my game will beat them. But I've not managed to get anywhere near that. Yeah. Well, this the, is a really depressing conversation. So yeah, Mark. yeah, I know. I yeah. Really when you think this is the first episode of the podcast, yeah, yeah, well, like, is, it'd be lovely if it was uplifting. We've got but... seventeen of these. Dissecting yeah, my yeah. comeback. Yeah, that's all it's going to be. It's just <laughs> I'm just getting deeper and deeper into your brain <laughs> until you can't talk to me anymore. 